Hello everyone. Coming out here from uh, Chappy Shasta ORV Park. Going for a little afternoon ride up overlooking the reservoir. Down there you can see the dam. Was just gonna take a moment to go over my uh, 2021 KTM 390 adventure. Talk about it and show what I've done to it so far. Um, had this bike for just over a year now and uh, been trying to make it do a lot, not just adventure, but a little bit of dual sport, um, which is probably asking a little much of it. But up at the front, well, I just got this used, is the GV uh, Sport windscreen here. So just put that on, just had it for a couple weeks. It puts the wind up just a little bit higher right now than the uh, stock windshield did, a couple more inches, but it's still not quite coming up over my helmet all the way. So uh, in the future, probably gonna get one of those clip-on, snap-on um, windscreen extensions. And I think that will get me fully out of the air and make it a little more comfortable and enjoyable when you're on the highway. Then this is just a Amazon special. I will have to look up what brand it is, but just a uh, little plastic light headlight protector. Simple to put on and just that extra bit of insurance for uh, roost protection and branches for the uh, headlight. Then up here, uh, I had to go through, I wasn't really planning on doing it, but I ended up breaking the stock plastic hand guards. They're just plastic here. And they had survived until I tried to load this motorcycle up on a, uh, a hitch mount and I lost it over the side. And so it broke off this one here. So that entailed putting on new hand guards, obviously upgraded, don't put the plastic ones back on. But the uh, stock handlebars have a plug in the end and uh instead of dealing with that i just and the, and the stock ones i probably could have made it work with the bolt but the bend was not matching up with the hand guards i wasn't able to get it lined up just right with that um and i think i tried two different sets the uh track side hand guards from cycle world and then these acrobus um, hand guards neither of those would just match up with the stock bend so it was kind of a, a giant job go ahead throw down some more money and I got the uh, tusk ATM bend handlebars here and that has a little bit straighter um, bar with less bend back so it kind of helps a little bit when you're seated upright the only problem with them is it would have been nice to have a little higher rise just to lift it up a little bit more um, as it is i'm not too much higher than stock i believe um, considering that i have these bar risers on and these again are another amazon special these are the uh, i think they're fairly common for the ktm dirt bikes and they fit the 390 but this is the adjustable one so it has several different shim sizes here and I got them all together to give me the maximum lift so that's getting the bar up just a little bit higher to give me that extra bit of height but the one problem with this whole setup is now with that hand guards and that straighter bend is that it got a little touch here when I come all the way over I tap on that windscreen and it didn't do that with the stock one it's just this uh, wider jiffy windscreen that causes that problem so it's not that big a deal I'll, I'll live with it hopefully the windscreen will live with it too and then got the uh i think it's takeaway i i don't remember off the top of my head but the uh, adjustable safety uh mirrors here just put those on straight from the beginning because i had heard horror stories about breaking the perches and uh, I've definitely tipped it over and given these a little tussle before. So that is uh, definitely worth doing. And one of the newest addition is this Ram quick mount for the phone. This is really nice. I went with this instead of the quad lock because I can just slip it in here. I don't have to change the 
phone case that I have on. I really like my phone case. It's got a few features in it. So here I can just pop it in, pop it out real quick. It has the, uh, pretty much there's no way it's coming out of there. And then being that it's on a RAM mount too, I could see that being useful for changing out with other devices in the future. Uh, one of the latest additions was putting in, this is the factory USB charger mount. I uh, drilled it out and shaved it out to put it into this little plastic piece here. That way in case I messed up or something goes wrong, all I gotta do is replace that plastic piece. It's not one of the more extensive plastic pieces and then it kind of fits nice. But the worst, absolute worst thing about this was uh, finding those accessory wires down here under this little door here was impossible for me. Uh, I've, I had tried it once before last year to find it and you're fishing in there, there's no room to do anything and there's just a bunch of random wires and connections that you don't want to tug on too hard but they're all wrapped up in there because you don't know what's what and you don't want to break anything. Uh, so I actually ended up this time spending a huge amount of time and taking off all this fairing here loosening up this whole part here i had to take off all the windshield front plastic and loosen up that side plastic plate and then i was finally able to get enough room in there find the accessory cable get it all lined up and fixed but that operation in itself took probably half an afternoon four to five hours it was a huge pain in the ass far worse than the other stuff i had started off the day by doing changing out the full exhaust system putting on this fuel um, controller and airbox lid and a few other things some small things and i did all that in half the time probably even a third of the time it took to do just that usb charger so that was the worst part and of course being that it's just doing a usb charger that's annoying in and of, of itself that you're wasting so much time on such a simple task so that was awful um, and then I think I skipped over the uh, factory radiator guard there. Then I'm still just using the factory engine guards. To me, they seemed good enough and I didn't really want to put anything heavier on. Um, I know that uh, I got the TX racing skid plate and I just put those engine guards on. And I know they make a um, crash guard but it looked like it's just a much bigger, more obtrusive, and probably a little heavier. And I didn't want to add all that weight and then extra expense for something I didn't really think was going to be beneficial. But um, I really like their skid plates. I got one on my other bike, the Spark Peeling. Um, the only thing is I still got to do some adjustment. First time I put it on, I, I had to uh, kind of squeeze fit it and that mount back here the factory one broke shortly thereafter because i probably had it all bolted down tight and it was uh, pulling on itself it was twisted and uh ended up fracturing that factory mount so i got a new one now but i'm going to have to uh, still finish up the job and probably come back and drill out my hole there and put a spacer in to get that to be secured on that end but for now it's got three points that it's mounted up on and uh, as long as I don't go uh, flat landing this on anything, I think I'll be okay. Um, and then this engine guard came with the other one on the other side, you'll see. And that was uh, something that I was probably overdue for, because that's the worst part about this um, T-Rex skid plate, is that it doesn't come out any to give you any kind of uh, coverage on the um, bottom side of this case here so this was narrowly missed a rock which ended up bending back my uh shifter and so i got real lucky on that one that i didn't do any damage to that so that's was a uh, a good piece of insurance there the shifter that kind of uh is annoying that as far as i can tell nobody makes an aftermarket one so that was 85 bucks from ktm to get the same one and i think it's you know a softer aluminum casting so it could be more durable I'm guessing but it has the linkage and stuff 
Um, so you can't just go get any old shifter that I know of. So if anybody knows a uh, something that might be interchangeable with that, um, let me know. That would be nice if there's uh, some kind of aftermarket or um, a better option for that. And then I've got the uh, the Sing One Piece Adventure Ergo seat here from KTM. I just picked that up used uh, along with the windscreen. Wanted to give that try. I initially had the um, the two piece Ergo seat, and I just got the the Ergo for the front. Obviously, not the pillion side, but it was still the two piece design, and that was nice and all. But I figured since I could get it used, save a little money, I wanted to give this see the try um and hopefully just have that little bit more room to scoot back and not feel the bump of the pillion seat um just replaced the chain on this uh it's just over four thousand miles on this bike and i was continuously adjusting the chain so as i've heard with many people this 390 chain from the factory it just stretches and stretches and stretches um, and I just had to always adjust it. So hopefully went with a new chain, quality chain. So hopefully that's behind me. And at the same time, I finally put on the um, chain guide uh, that I had purchased when I got the bike. And I just put on a, a couple spools there to help with the maintenance side. And see the front end still has the TKC 70, but I got myself stuck down in a stream one time on some river rocks and that TK um, C70 on the rear has a solid band down the middle and I partially blame that for not being able to get enough traction to get out the one bank I wanted to go up. Um, so I went and changed it over and this is the uh, Shinko uh, Adventure. the adventure trail e805 and so i think that gives it a little better uh, dirt ability there um and honestly i didn't really notice any difference on the road with this tire i've been able to push it just as hard as i would have pushed on the other tire no noise so i'm pretty happy with this tire and it's quite affordable i think it's just over 100 bucks or so um, and then originally made a big purchase uh, when I got the bike to get some racks and I believe it's um, Carpe Moto, Capri Moto, I'll have to put it down in the link, but they're an Italian company. You can order from them, pay a little shipping fee and some of their stuff has just got amazing exchange rates. And so like this tank bag I got from them and I think pretty much any tank bag out there you're going to be well um well into the hundred dollar mark and probably 150 for anything quality and i think with the exchange rate this came out to about 60 bucks and it's waterproof it's got a little map holder um mounts in there pretty easily with one strap around the neck and then these two side straps and it can be easily kicked to the side when i need to fuel up uh, the only problem with it is it's just got this little slip here for putting in your phone or some kind of device or map. And that's pretty tough to get into. And then this plastic um, screen here and the rest of the material is grippy enough that at least with most of my stuff, it is a pain to slip it into here. It just binds up and it's not easy at all to uh, get things in and out. So it'd be nice if it was maybe a, a zipper design that you could put something in and then zip it up from behind um, or some bigger opening on the sides but um, it's definitely not an in and out quick and easy so that's where the phone mount is a huge savings on time and effort so here you can see the uh, other engine guard that came with that and i also forgot to mention that uh if you go to t-rex's uh, website t-rex racing that they do not list these under the 390 Adventure. They list them at least under the uh, Husqvarna Spark Peelin 401. So same engine on both bikes. 
So to get these, I actually ordered them from the, the Husky side of their website and put them on the same bike. So I think that's one thing I might drop an email or something to T-Rex Racing that they should list this along with the 390 Adventure parts because it obviously fits with the skid plate they offer. And it's definitely protection that's needed on that other side. Um, this side here, I probably wouldn't have purchased this if it was not a set. Um, I don't think I would be too worried about that part there between the rest of the protection, but that other side is essential. And so what else have we done here? Obviously, uh, so the most recent addition is a FuelX Controller Pro and this Dominator R exhaust. Um, so I'd seen this from another YouTuber. Um, a few YouTubers had the Fuel X. And I was originally looking at going with the Cooper. I had ordered their whole system, exhaust and controller and everything for like $800 or more. But the delay in receiving it was so long that I finally ended up um, canceling my order because I was uh, moving and stuff and it, I didn't want to lose it in the mail. So I canceled that. Just went without it. And then having seen this, um, I did decided that since I did wanna make a few little changes that I needed to go with the fuel controller. And I don't think the bike itself stock, I didn't really have any complaints. I think maybe sometimes it stalls a little easily, but that might just be the nature of the beast of having a 400cc bike. Um, with this weight doing you know trail activities so it just is not a super low-end tractor bike. It's it's a little more high-end. Um, and along with that, that reminds me that I put on the 14-tooth uh, sprocket in the front. So I did make a gearing change here. That's got the 14-tooth there and still the original rear sprocket. But that made a little difference. Uh, if I wanted anything I could get for out here in the dirt, um, but on the highway it's still great uh 70 miles per hour is about 7,000 rpm just a little under 7,000 rpm and it is not straining this bike at all it can still pull up to over 90 miles per hour i'm sure and i wouldn't hesitate to recommend that and it's less than 20 dollars to do that change out on a sprocket so easily the best money spent so the FuelX Controller Pro, I think if I had it to do over again, because I didn't know enough about it when I ordered it, I probably would have just gone with the light. Um, the Pro comes with the mapping selector and 10 different maps to go through. Um, but as far as I understand it, it does an auto learn. So it's always adjusting itself from the readings it's taking from the O2 sensor. And I don't think I'm savvy enough that I'm going to be playing around with this mapping controller much and I probably would have just liked the more minimal um, setup of the light where it just has a single map and it just auto tunes itself and you don't make any changes and I think it's about a $20 difference so you're not you're not paying a lot more for this but it's just something I don't see myself being savvy enough to uh, use or take the time to play with it all that much so I pretty much have it set out the stock fueling and just let it auto tune at that setting and then you can go leaner or richer if you want it on those setting ranges but the main reason I went with that was because I wanted to change up the exhaust um, just mainly for weight savings and yeah to have a little better sound and so I had seen this from somebody um, went to their website and this is an amazing value it it's it's out of Poland and this whole exhaust from cylinder out uh, stainless steel and it's about 200 and say 250 bucks with shipping I think it just an amazing value you can't even buy a can for that um, and it gets rid of the giant resonator in there now it's funny because I have a giant hole down here in the suspension there's a giant empty space so all that's gone and it's just straight pipe back to here and uh i can only guess what the weight savings are there but then it gives it a really nice sound and i was really 
worried because I didn't want it to be loud and obnoxious or painful. And uh, their decimal readings on the website are up around the 100 decibel mark. And uh, you can order different decibel, decibel killers uh, inserts. And so I went with the, um, the hard killer one, so the, the maximum silencing effect. And uh, that's supposed to drop it down like six to eight decibels, I believe, maybe four to six decibels. Uh, and I was still worried because technically it's, they say it's a 98 decibel exhaust and then you drop it down six. That still worried me that that was gonna be very loud and obnoxious and I don't, don't really want that. But I will say that it's got a real nice low end bark and then up on the freeway and stuff, it is pretty unintrusive. I am not bothered at all with it. The wind noise is honestly louder um, than the exhaust sound is and it's not droney, I, I wouldn't say. So I'm really happy with that. I can't complain. And then the value is just phenomenal. Um, so I guess I got off topic there, but back to the, the luggage, the uh, I got the GV pannier racks and the tail rack here. And I really like that setup because it gives you a nice big, uh, kind of like a C channel to uh, put duffels, rolls or anything big back there. So you can put all your camping gear up there and uh, it gives it a little bit of protection from sliding back and forth. Has some cutouts here where you can run straps to and from. So I really love that rack setup. And then the side racks are great because they're keyed. So I got their Canyon bags, soft bags. They pop right onto here, lock in. And then all you have to do is come and take the key that comes with it and you unlock it. it pulls out it doesn't just fall off it leans out and then you can take them off and so within 30 seconds less than that the time it takes to pop two keys you can have your bags off take them into a hotel a house or something if you want to take it off you don't have to monkey with anything else so those were amazing and then again with the exchange rate um, these I want to say the the metal parts here I'll have to look it up but they were super cheap compared to any other pannier and tail rack system I'd seen. And then the bags were about comparable to a lot of the soft bags I was seeing. So there wasn't a huge savings there, but the mounts, there was a huge savings on. And I also like the fact that being that it's GV, if you want to change out this rack on the back, the tail rack, you could put say a case, a helmet case or some kind of luggage case on the back. And then they also carry a very extensive line of hard cases so if you wanted to get a hard case set to go with this you could easily buy many different sizes of hard cases pop off your soft cases here with just the key pop on hard cases and you'll be done there's no big big investment or big amount of time to take and change those out so i thought that was the greatest thing ever <laughs> uh, I, and i always look on their website because they carry a lot of this uh, european bike stuff um see what else have we done to her i want to say that we're pretty close to the end here ah it's been a pretty great bike the initial reason i went with the 390 adventure was weight i wanted an adventure bike i wanted something that you know i wanted the unicorn bike of uh, a dual sport that can do highway uh, which doesn't exist so to me this was going to be the lightest bike at about 350 pounds um, out the door and that puts it just a little bit heavier than a lot of like the DRZ 400s um, the KLX 300 I mean you're talking 50 pounds difference that, that might be a lot but it's within spitting distance whereas most of the other adventure bikes you're over the 400 pound mark and then it's affordable I mean uh, for the price of a KLR 650 you're getting this bike, which has a far more, I would say, advanced engine that's just, it's revs nice, it's great. This bike has um, amazing uh, on-road suspension. It just, it's like a sport bike. This thing feels like a sport bike on the road to me. And I, that might not mean a lot because I don't ride sport bikes, but I feel like I can go into the corners as fast as I want with this. And 
the suspension and the tires just take care of it and it darts and dodges it's really sporty and that's probably partially due to the fact that you're only getting the 19 inch front wheel not the 21 inch so that's the uh, compromise you make but um, and I know a lot of people rag on the mag wheels not having spoked wheels but so far I have been all over off-road from single track dual track rough and rocky stuff and um, I've been fortunate enough that I haven't damaged them and I don't think I think a lot of people are blowing it out of proportion perhaps um, if it had spoked wheels that'd be great and obviously they just came out with the spoked wheel edition so going on that makes this even a better value I know the price went up but I don't think anybody can argue that it's not a great value it has no competition I mean there's no bike that competes with this um, the Kawasaki 300 uh, uh, adventure bike is as far as I understand it nothing like this as far as power and off-road ability and then again the value of fully adjustable suspension uh, it's not the most amazing suspension in the world but you have some ability to adjust it and it still works really well I mean for say a beginner bike or intermediate bike I don't think you're gonna have much problem with the suspension now and it's an adventure bike it's only meant to go so hard for the stuff I believe um, so could it be better yes but they were shooting for a price point and I think they nailed it I mean this has got to be one of the best values that you can buy for a KTM um, and just having that adjustability on the suspension and then the road modes are awesome I mean you're getting ABS cornering ABS you're getting the uh, motorcycle traction control so all those features that uh, I don't think the KLR 650 can compete with and yes it can be a little annoying that if you stall or shut it off you have to reset the motorcycle traction control the ABS stays off but the motorcycle traction control resets and that will goof you up if you're go to do a little little hill or some kind of soft spot and all of a sudden it cuts power just the other day I was a uh, I went and tootled off-road um, I just went off the street and I was driving on a shoreline with a little hill there and I was about to go up a hill and because I was just barely off road, I didn't even cross my mind to change my settings. And I started going up this hill and all of a sudden it cut power. And that was the worst feeling in the world that I, uh, I was like, oh crap, I forgot to shut off those modes. Um, and that was all my fault just because you got to stop. You got to make the adjustments and I can switch the, the motorcycle traction control on the fly. Um, you just have to be able to find a place where you're kind of coasting or whatever and hold the throttle close for about 10 seconds so i've been able to do that but it's just one more thing that you got to do when you, you restart the bike you got to remember so it is a pain in the butt it'd be nice if they change that i went in and had the software updated at the dealership thinking that uh i had heard that that might change it to the what i believe the newer models have a uh, a fix for that i don't know if that's true i haven't played with them but it didn't fix mine so uh, it still is the same as always where you have to make sure you shut it off and then re-shut off traction control every time you restart the bike or yeah so that's the only downside um, other than that I mean power is really good it is a bike that you have to rev a bit it's not a tractor uh, but it still does really good I think I go on some decently um, gnarly terrain that it's probably more than they really designed the bike for. You know, this was probably meant to be a road bike um, with a little bit of off-road. It is not a R model, just, just say that. But it still does pretty well, but it doesn't keep me from wanting to have a dual sport because it is heavy enough when you get in technical stuff that you do not want to get caught up you don't want to get caught up in a trail that you don't know where you're going and you're going to have to maybe turn this around on a hillside that was my biggest concern like say i just came over here to this hill climb there i can't really tell how aggressive it gets and how far it goes um and if i was on 
a lighter dual sport, um, I would definitely go shooting up that. But right now I am not in the mood to find myself up there and find out that I can't make it all the way and I'm gonna have to work the bike around. So I'm gonna not do that. This is a great bike. I plan on doing it, doing VDRs with it uh, and enjoying it for a lot of the stuff where I'm gonna hit the highway a bit. But I do plan on getting a dual sport and I've been salivating and um, picking away at the information, you know, watching reviews and specs, trying to find a dual sport that I, A, want to pay for <laughs> and B, will fit the bill. Something that I can take and ride out and just have a good off-road time with and not be intimidated by. And for most things, this is not an intimidating bike, but it is still not a off-road machine like I'm looking for. Um, for out here having access to all kinds of single track trails. And so having a dual sport where I'll be able to hop on, spend 20, 30 minutes going to the park and then get out in the dirt and not worry about having to pick up a bike or trying to maneuver it around. All right, well, thanks for uh, listening to my video. I hope you got something out of it. Leave me any comments on if I missed something that you'd like to know more about this bike. I'll try and hopefully make a few more videos to give more perspectives on it and fill in some of the gaps or make it a little more coherent. But uh, thanks for watching and I appreciate it. Have a great day. Bye.